where can I find some of the fun uses for asbestos that are miraculous, mm. but not practical and boring? So heart surgeons would use asbestos thread to sew up your heart. Christmas trees were decorated with asbestos artificial snow. So, you know, there it is coming out of the packet. It's it, This is basically the loose, fluffy oh. asbestos. A brand of toothpaste. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was marketed, it has asbestos fibres in it to be extra abrasive. Asbestos soles for your shoes if you if you work in a hot environment. Serious foot odour. Yeah, or possibly. Yeah, it could be. As we've said before, asbestos theatre curtains, asbestos table mats, oven gloves. I like this one, baking paper. That makes sense. Uh, asbestos jackets for firefighters yeah. back to the 1850s. Asbestos helmets, asbestos umbrellas. I did like this for firefighters. For volcanoes. Well, I don't know. It must be. Asbestos ironing board covers. Well, that makes sense. Asbestos jewellery. Nope, nope. It's a polished form of the rock, I think. So anything shiny can be jewellery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But here's, here's my two favourites. Asbestos face masks. So if yep. you're working in a dusty environment, you, you, Good could, idea. you could get some asbestos face mask to protect you. There were some working in asbestos mines who put an asbestos face mask on. To protect me from asbestos. <laughs> and here's my favourite. There was a brand of cigarettes. No. That had asbestos filters in them. <laughs> asbestos was a miracle product. You could use it in so many ways. But as I said before, hundreds of thousands of deaths. Yeah. This comes from an ancient Roman piece of advice. Mm -hmm. One should never buy asbestos quarry slaves as they often die young. Some people reckon that Mike Todd was always destined for greatness. He was the kind of kid uh, who was making more money than his dad at the age of 10, running <laughs> running these awesome How complicated- poor was his dad? I, I think his dad might've been poor, but he was running a whole bunch of different schemes. Like one of them was, uh, um, he told the local theater, hey, kids are sneaking into your theater. I can guard the door for you. So mm -hmm. they paid him and then, the kids would come up to him and say, how much to get into the theatre? And he'd say, all right, it's a nickel. So yeah. he's making money on both sides. He's got a whole bunch of these things. He's a junior preneur. He was uh, the kind of teenager uh, who helped the local pharmacy uh, sell illegal alcohol during Prohibition. Helps the local pharmacy <laughs> sell booze during the Prohibition. He was the kind of youth uh, who had made two multi-million dollar fortunes and lost them both. Before he was 21, he'd made, I think, $2 million and then lost it all and then made another million dollars and lost it all <laughs> by the age of 21. And this is when people were earning, what, 10 bucks a week? Oh, something like that. So all I'm saying is he's he's a can-do kind of guy. He's a go-getter. He's a, he's a, can -do he's a do thinger. Oops, didn't. He was the kind of man who, much later on, could make all of Hollywood, and in particular his third wife, Elizabeth Taylor, sit up, pay attention, and sob. <laughs> That's what every wife looks for in her husband. But I want to focus on uh, just one moment in Mike Todd's life, the moment of his breakout hit, the moment when uh, a lot of people say he found his true calling. It was the Chicago World's Fair, 1933. It was called the Flame Dance, and it wasn't super complicated at all. In fact, some people described it as one part burlesque and one part daredevilry. So basically it was a hot lady, in a burlesque coat. Yeah, I know. Dressed that. up like a moth. And she would do her burlesque dance. To the flame. Closer and closer to a giant gas jet. It was, it was in the shape of a candle. Um, oh. But it's, it's this giant flame on stage. And she's dancing closer and closer and closer Call to me, it. Is this pessimism or optimism that I'm expecting her to burst into flames? Well, what do you mean? Well, well, <laughs> Look, look, it wasn't terribly complicated. I, you know, I, I just think, it doesn't sound it. Look, here's, here's a photo here. This is her dancing along. And she's got two um, muscular gentlemen breathing flames and stuff like that to jazz it up. But basically the whole point is she's like a moth to a flame. I get it. How close can we dance? And Oops. the final moment? Yeah. She catches fire. Of course. Her moth costume bursts in flame. When she comes too close, her wings catch fire and the whole thing just burns off her and turns to ash. Part of the act? All part of the act. All deliberately part of the act. She turns, completely appearing naked to the audience, all shocked, and runs off stage. The audience are like, whoa, how the fuck do you just burn off all of her clothes? I saw Beave <laughs> in the 30s. <laughs> That's what they're thinking. Todd, Todd made a joke to the reporters. He was like, well, I, um, I burned up four girls before I got it right. Uh. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's hilarious. I know, right, I know, right, yeah. I know. He's terrible. The um, animal, the monster. But what was the magic? What was the bit of Hollywood show bizarry that uh, kept Muriel the moth uh, alive while her costume burns off her? Yeah. Well, as later 
advertisements from a building company show. Oh, fuck. It was a flesh-coloured linen suit, uh-huh. a bodysuit, made entirely of what was considered then and had been oh, for no. a very long no. time a magical, miraculous substance, a substance mm. I'm going to tell you about today. It was asbestos. Oh, fuck. Welcome to The Wholesome Show. Podcast that sits sobbing. Um, the podcast that dances naked next to the flame of science. I'm Will Grant. I'm Rod Lamberts. How does the word asbestos make you feel? I make me feel like coughing. Coughing, like coughing. Honestly, whenever I hear asbestos now, I imagine fibres in my lungs, and I go. Uh, 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 that's what. I, and, but now, at least, I imagine a semi-naked lady from the 1930s. I've, I've added to your story as well as choking. About. And I think of James Hardy. Yeah. Uh, Not the man, the company. Look, to me as well, it's, it's uh, yes, coughing, but also that little bit of horror. Like there's this thing, this substance that we've got this whole yeah. mystique of terror around. Also amazing. To be fair, when I was younger, before we became aware of it, when I was quite little and I was became aware of asbestos at all, I thought, whoa. Like it blew my mind. As, as a kid, it blew my mind. And I saw demonstrations. I just thought, this is fucking amazing. Good, good. Because- in another episode coming soon, yeah. I'm going to tell you about the monster that is asbestos, what we've all come to know about this horrible thing that has contributed to hundreds of thousands of deaths and still does today, yeah. heaps and heaps of deaths. Yeah. But before we get there, I want to turn to the miracle, Yeah. to the other part of asbestos that is like this stuff is just something from another planet. Fuck yeah. I couldn't agree more. All right. Uh, question one, what is asbestos? A substance that doesn't burn easily. Uh, Yes, that is true. You are accurate there. Asbestos is a generic name for a group of mineral silicates, long chains of silicon and oxygen atoms uh, locked together with various other metals like uh, magnesium or iron or calcium. And it forms into long, skinny little crystals, little hair-like crystals. Now, I mean, this is the interesting thing about how it forms. So it's it's a rock. It's a rock. And it- forms in the cracks of otherwise soft rock. So you imagine you've got some uh, bedrock and- Where the Flintstones lived. Yeah, that's true. And inside inside there, there's a crack. And over a long, long period, I don't have like, it's over geological ages, uh. little tiny crystals reach out and connect in between. Okay. And so it's made of the same rock around it, but it's these tiny little crystals that are, that are joining across the crack. And but so, made of the same rock. Made of the same rock. Just in a different formation. Yeah. Sometimes the crystals can grow like up to 15 centimetres, so like okay. a six-inch sort of thing. Mostly they're, they're a fair bit shorter, like they're, they're sort of one centimetre. Six inches, thing. that's about. Yeah, that's – yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> there's six n- types of asbestos that normally come up. I'm only giving you these because wh- one reason I like one name, but also there is it is worth learning the difference between – you don't need to know these, but there's – Is there going to be a test halfway through? Actinolite. Yeah. Amosite, yeah. anthophyllite, tremolite, chrysotile. That one's different. It's not a light. It's a tile. There's uh, always an odd one out. I, uh, in large families, one of the kids doesn't look like the others, and you know it's because someone was infidelious. It, one, it, it is the odd one out as well, and I'll come to it in a second. Yeah. But there's also crocodilite. Of course there is. Because uh, I like that name. That's of course what there is. And, and crocodilite looks like croc's teeth. It looks. I figured it was not because it's green or eats yeah. meat. The thing that makes asbestos a miracle is – it's described as a physical paradox. It's combined properties of silk and rock. Like it's it's a rock. Uh, that you can make clothes out of. That you can make clothes out of. And and there's nothing else like it. Like, I mean, there's a couple of types of asbestos. But- Is there really nothing? Th- there is nothing. There is no, no, no other weavable rock. Like the idea of Isn't a there? rock that you can weave. Ancient names for it often pointed to this. They call it stone silk or stone wool or, you know, th- these kinds of things. Uh, yeah. and uh, Not very imaginative, but I understand why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, th- within those six different types, most of the, the crystals are rigid, um, but there yeah. is also a bendy crystal. Oh, yeah. Um, which I just how, – how you get a bendy, bendy crystal, crystal. I, I, I don't know. This I don't proves know. that physics will always end up being wrong. Uh, probably. Always. Yeah. Sorry, physicists. So the fact that it's weavable rock is, is – is the thing that really yeah. makes it so unique. And the thing that f- 
for a long, long, long time That's cool has made fuck. it so miraculous. Like, like it's fire resistant, it's electricity resistant, it's rot resistant. And it's, you can make socks out of it. Almost goddamn indestructible. How long have we been using asbestos? Four and a half million years. Mm-hmm. Oh, you mean people? Yeah, yeah. Well, 2000. No, it's a lot more than that. There's some evidence, like they've found asbestos in um, Stone Age uh, oh. debris back 750,000 years, Like, but there's not much more there. There's a suggestion that maybe people have found it back then, but there's, there's but much- That could have been happenstance, right? Like they're Stone Age, they just grab rocks. Could be, could be. What do you work with? Rock. Yeah, 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 Which could, rock? Dem rock. Uh, so we don't know much okay. more. But we, there, there's hard evidence for a bunch of things that are like 6,000 years ago. So mm-hmm. 4,000, 3,000, 2,000 BC. So okay. there's things in Finland that we've had that in Egypt. Um, in fact, there's a whole bunch of different places around the world where- And clearly deliberately used, yep, not yep. just happening. No, to be no, used. absolutely. Okay. Yep. Uh, well, so in Finland, 2,500 BC, so 5,000 years ago, our oh, best part of, mm. um, they found it in clay pots. Uh, so it's it's included okay. in clay pots, yeah. probably to make them more fire resistant. There's lamps and candles. I, I don't know what evidence there is for this, but but it, there may have been um, lamps and candles using asbestos five thousand years ago. But as in, like a container that would hold oil, that would be the thing, or no, an unburnable wick. Uh, so one place I said, you know, when you have one of those eternal flames. One great way to do it is to have an asbestos wick that never burns down, I just and then you soak have, oil and then you can and, yeah. and then you can add oil or, or something like that. Two or three thousand BC, the Egyptians were using it as well, um, wrapping wrapping their pharaohs in asbestos cloth to protect the bodies from deterioration. Okay, I mean wax will work. Yeah, well this Good. is this is way more fun. One of the things that normally doesn't happen to a corpse is it gets incinerated over the millennia. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, look, but. Um, if it's fancy and it's rock, it's like wrap me in rock. Go on. I would like it. There's some there's some early written references. Herodotus, 456 BC. Yeah. He talked about asbestos shrouds wrapping the dead before their bodies were tossed onto the funeral pyre. They like that because then well, you- Well, that's dumb. No, but it keeps all of the ashes separate from the wood ashes. So, so it bakes. Yeah. Or I, no, you still, you still, you must burn on the inside, but it keeps all of your ashes together so that you know you're not mixing with the wood or something like that. Because- if you're taking uh, your family's ashes, you don't want to just have a pile of wood in there. You don't know. Also, I've got to say the name Herodotus. I've been thinking about names recently. Yeah. And the old names are the best one. So I was going to change my name to um, Agamemnon. I like Agamemnon. I, yeah. I, I pitched that as a potential name for one of my children. And what? She said no? Well, I did. And your parents apparently, apparently. and the rest of your family? But all, come on. All other advice said no. Well, here's another one. Um, Theophrastus. Fuck yes. <laughs> Theophrastus, because you get called Fras for short. Or, or, stus. or Theo. No, stus. <laughs> well, well, he was Theo one of Frustus. he was one of Aristotle's students, and he wrote a book called On Stones, which I just <laughs> <laughs> round. <laughs> but um. but he said there's one particular stone um, that looks like rotten wood, yet was not consumed with doused in, with oil and ignited. Oh, so it so, looks like wood and doesn't burn. Yeah, they're they're talking about it. Pliny the Elder in Rome in the first century AD, he said, yeah, asbestos is pretty good. It's quite indestructible by fire. Also affords protection against all spells, especially those of the Meiji. So, oh, that's cool. Wait, so it's magic proof. He was the only one claiming it's magic proof, but other people have you know, plenty. Of the, so, plenty of the younger went, "Dad, you're an idiot. <laughs> it's no magic." So, look, you can understand, like, like the ancients knew a bit about this, and and they absolutely used it. It was it was not rare, but it was sort of unusual. Uh, it was hard to get. Uh, it was it was unusual and noteworthy. Yeah. yeah. So you get you know it it often became you know something that's like the realm of fairy tales and stuff like that. You know, well, it someone, would. someone has a cloth. It would though. Look, can, it, yeah, it looks like wood. It's made of rock. You can weave it into a cloth. You try and burn it. And it and says it, and it won't no. Burn. It literally won't burn. And, and like that's like, wild. It's it, wild. But 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 that absolutely is like it's it's a magical cloth. Yeah, it is. And uh, yeah. unambiguously, you know what we ought to do? We ought to crush it up and breathe it. Because think how invulnerable we become. <sighs> part two. Part two. We'll talk about part two. Later. <laughs> <laughs> they thought it was the the wool of the fire resistant salamander or the feathers of the phoenix. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's where a bunch of the names from it uh, sort of came. Feathers of the phoenix sounds a lot cooler than as bad does. But what I wanted to do here is just sort of give a chance to listen to and think about the the sorts of uses that asbestos was put to. Yeah, I'll go through a bunch that the ancients did, um, and then I'll come to some of the the more moderns. Um, so napkins. Yes. So, number one, the Romans seem to have made uh, both towels and napkins out of Oh, they did make napkins? <laughs> yes. <'Cause>. Yes. 
I don't want to burn my. N- I don't know why. Well, well, I do know why. But well, partly. I'm guessing if you wash them, they they're pretty resilient. No, there's a great story, and I'm jumping ahead here to the to the uh, the Middle it. Ages. What are they? The I think it's late medieval period, yeah. like Charlemagne. Charlemagne, another good name. Yeah, Charlemagne had uh, you know big king of France. Um, he would have a lot of banquets and stuff like that, but he'd have a tablecloth made out of asbestos. Everyone's finished eating and they've made a big freaking mess. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. And he he rips the tablecloth off the table. Throws it in the fire. Throws it in the fire. Clean. And it glows red for a bit and then he plucks it out and he goes, clean. Fucking great. I mean, come on. <laughs> apparently. Apparently on. that stopped a war. I don't know how. Like apparently. Because of his magical powers. Yeah. Like there was, he was, you know, there was some warring factions and they came to have dinner and um, and he said, magic tablecloth. Watch this. And they were like, holy fuck, this guy's wild. He's like, how could we fight against this guy yeah. and his magic tablecloth? There is, there is power in this. What's his name? Charlie? <laughs> yeah, Charlie. Yeah. Okay. So what else we got? Ancient Egyptians uh, put their pharaohs in it. Uh, Scandinavians mixed it with pottery and sealed cracks in their log huts with it. Yeah. The Persians imported their stone wool from India to burn the bodies of the dead. Yeah. Um, there's some more of the magic trick type stuff. Yeah. Um, medieval merchants would sell asbestos crosses uh, or like bits of, and, yeah. and they show they can't burn, so they must be the true cross. Obviously. So it's it's like they're using it for a bit of fakery. Like Charlemagne, mm. um, there was a Chinese general once who had a jacket made out of asbestos, and and in a dinner party he deliberately spells spill some wine on himself. Oopsie! <laughs> I'm a duffer. <laughs> he, 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 you know, oh, rip his jacket off, throw it in the fire, and then take it out again. And it's all clean. Um, which Presto. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very elaborate trick. I know. Like, and you're not putting it on straight away because I don't know. Be warm. I'm, sure, I'm sure it's it a little It doesn't retain bit heat that well, I, I thought. No, I think, no, it's actually good. It at, sheds it fast, right? It sheds it fast. I mean, that's why. Uh, Space shuttles. One of the few places it is still used today is in uh, fire suits and things like that. It is very heat resistant. Um, and, and, and heat re- re- repulsant, like throwing it, it, it sheds fast, right? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't maintain heat. I think so. I think so. It's still a miraculous uh, It is. Material. It's fucking wild. Just don't breathe it. So getting a bit later, uh, Benjamin Franklin had a wallet made out of- um, Not teeth? Out of asbestos. Wallet. <laughs> yeah. In case you fall into a fire and your money gets burned, I, I don't know. Apparently the French- no, the Italians in the 1800s, they were weaving their banknotes with asbestos oh, for to, fuck's pro- sake. to protect them from uh, burning, burning I, I, I assume. A real hazard. Yeah. My money always falls it, in the it fire. It feels like a dumb thing to do. Yeah, um, showing off. But, of course, throughout most of the period, it was sort of a party trick of kings. Like, they, like it was yeah. a cool material, but none of this is really – a use like it's 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 a an yeah. interesting magical thing. I think the, the closest thing to a use is where you're putting it on the on the funeral f- pyre if you want to keep your yeah, ashes okay. separate. Um, Otherwise, yeah, it's parlor tricks for the wealthy. But everything changed in the industrial era. So didn't it though? Ah, oh, look, <laughs> I think two things here. One is they they worked out pretty quickly how to mine it, mm. not safely, but how to do it. And they also um, they discovered fuckloads of uses for it. Yeah. Now. There's a whole bunch of boring things, building materials, yeah. uh, you know, roofing, yeah. great for roofing, yeah. a whole bunch of other sort of uh, hot places like a fireplace, you know, a way to Metallurgy. Boring, boring. I went out there and I thought- Kilns. Where can I find, where can I find some of the fun uses for asbestos that are miraculous yeah. but not quite uh, as uh, practical and boring? So heart surgeons would use asbestos thread to sew up your heart. I don't know why. Because it's cool? I, I don't know why. I suppose it doesn't melt. It doesn't quickly. rot. I think yeah. I think their point was it doesn't rot. And, and other things, nothing else doesn't rot. This might be before they had- Before titanium. Like, like titanium and wires, thin thin wires. And the could, silky goodness that doesn't come from a spider's bum. Here's a good one. Christmas trees were decorated with asbestos artificial snow. So, you know, there it is coming out of the packet. It's it, This is basically the loose, fluffy asbestos. Oh, f- <laughs> where you could you could sort of fluff it around your Which house. Which kind do you want? Oh, can I have a big bag of the worst one? <laughs> no, 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 no. Worse. I, oh, oh. <laughs> Kids, this will be fun. Not in 15 years, but right now. Look at the snow. Oh, Jesus, um, fuck. A brand of toothpaste. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was marketed. It has asbestos fibres in it to be extra abrasive. Well, that's not untrue. It's no, a rock. it's not. <laughs> uh, asbestos soles for your shoes if you if you work in a hot environment. Serious foot odor. Yeah, or possibly. Yeah, it could be. As we've said before, 
asbestos theatre curtains to stop uh, the fire there. Yeah, okay. Asbestos table mats, you know, oh, in case, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oven gloves. I like this one, baking paper. So no, it makes sense. Use the baking paper now to uh, keep your trays clean and and things cook a little bit better. Well, um, we currently use a silicon one that doesn't, so you don't have to keep throwing it away. And I'm waiting for the hey. day where people are going to go, oh, yeah, your silicon baking paper, right? That gives you every cancer that exists. Look, it's you coming. Know it. You know it's coming. Any time now that I hear the word uh, miracle, uh, run duck under the no, desk. No, no, like like um, this is this is the new miracle substance, the new mir- yeah. you know, and and science does come out with these every so often. This is the, it's yeah. like it's the same as breakthrough, but it's like all of those properties where you hear oh it never breaks down, uh-huh. yeah, then you go oh okay why, <laughs> and what does that do to me? Uh, asbestos jackets for firefighters yeah. back to the 1850s. Asbestos helmets, asbestos umbrellas. I did like this for firefighters. For volcanoes. Well, I don't know. It must be. So, like, here's a bunch of firefighters hiding behind this little umbrella. Asbestos ironing board covers. Well, that makes sense. Asbestos jewellery. No, nope. Um, nope. Actually, asbestos jewellery is probably not the worst. It's a polished form of the rock, I think. So anything shiny can be jewellery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But here's, here's my two favourites. Asbestos face masks. So if yep. you're working in a dusty environment, you, you, good could, idea. you could get some asbestos face masks to protect you. And so it's good idea. as I'll come it's to, you know, when we talk about the dangers of asbestos, there were some working in asbestos mines who put an asbestos face mask on. To protect me from asbestos. <laughs> and here's my favourite. There was a brand of cigarettes. No. That had asbestos filters in them. Uh, so I don't know what they're filtering out. But as we've said all the way through, uh, asbestos was a miracle product. You could use it in so many ways. It's actually something that is totally unique. There is it's no, wild. There's, there's nothing else like it. And we haven't made in science, uh, in, in our modern manufacturing techniques, something that does the same sorts of things as asbestos could do. It really is, you know, halfway between li- wild. living and rock. Yeah, no, it, it's unambiguously fucking wild. I agree. Like, I'm, I'm racking my brain to come up with some smart-ass comment about, what about product X? I don't have one. <laughs> like I said, when I was a kid, when I first heard about asbestos and I saw demonstrations of asbestos panelling and stuff, blew my mind because it wasn't metal. Yep. Only metal could resist fire. Yep. No, I, I knew that as an better. eight-year-old. This is living, soft Yeah, rock. yeah, yeah. And, oh, it, just... and, and you finish burning it and you can touch it. Like, it's ridiculous. But as I said before, hundreds of thousands of deaths. Yeah. They're still going. And they're all horrible. Yeah. So next week, I'm going to tell you about how we learned that asbestos was bad, how long we've known that asbestos is bad, and how many people tried to cover it up. I'll I'll just give you one clue. Just a taste. One clue. This comes from an ancient Roman piece of advice. Mm -hmm. One should never buy asbestos quarry slaves, as they often die young.